Welcome back to the workshop for another installment of our nifty tools in the shop. Uh, today I'm looking at two four planes uh, or large bench planes. This is a Craftsman and this is a Stanley. Um, these are both planes that I bought at antique stores uh, or consignment stores. Uh, this one came from Williamsburg, Virginia. This one came from Moorhead City, North Carolina and uh, antique stores in both locations. The Stanley line is probably a little more well known. The Craftsman uh, is pretty prevalent in the US. Uh, these were actually probably made by Sargent. Uh, it has indications on the blade, BL, which means uh, Sargent made, but that's the blade, that's not the plane. Um, I got this one first and used it for a long time. Uh, I got this one several years later, but actually this is the one that's used almost all the time now. And so we'll look at both and what they can do. And I'll give you a little bit of history, but um, most of you, some of you may already know a lot on both planes. It's not a lot of, in fact, when I looked up information on this one on the internet, what I got was posts I had done in the North Carolina Woodworkers uh, group specifically about this plane. So it's not a lot of information out there, or if there was, it's been taken down, or who knows? If you know a lot about, about this plane, the Craftsman, let me know in the comments. Now, they're both considered four planes, uh, sort of based on measurements. Uh, this one, the Craftsman, is about 18 inches long, and the Stanley is a little over 18 inches long. It's about 18 and a quarter, something like that. This is also a number six. It says it on that, and that's a well-known uh, Stanley plane. So because of their lengths, uh, I call them four planes. Uh, for that reason. How they're used uh, traditionally and how I use them may be a little different and we'll go into that next. The Craftsman plane, as I said, I bought in, in, in an antique store in Williamsburg, Virginia. Uh, it says made in, in the US. It's got a kind of what's left of a sticker on the bottom. And uh, this area also has, now I know that if you've got one of these and the Craftsman is in brass, it's considered older than the ones that are just stamped. This is not stamped, this is sort of a boss, it's raised lettering. But as I said, I couldn't find any information on how old a Craftsman of this age would be. Again, this was probably made by Sargent, um, which is a tool company. The uh, blade, blade right here, this being the capstone, the blade does say uh, Craftsman made in the US and it has the initials BL and BL is uh, usually used with sergeant tools. And so sergeant built this under the Craftsman name and it was sold uh, as a Craftsman tool. The frog being attached to the sole with two screws rather than bolted in or some of the other ways that you could do it. Uh, and I have taken this completely apart and I've taken some pictures of the way it looks and you can see those here. Now, a lot of people use their four planes as a scrub plane, and I have not done that yet. Now, when I got this one, this was the first longest plane that I had ever gotten. I had jack planes and smoothers, but this is the longest sole, and I should also point out it's got that corrugated bottom. Uh, and a lot of people ask, why do they do the corrugated bottom? Uh, from what I've read, this is sort of uh, back in the day when you had wooden planes, that wood on wood contact was a really good contact, when they started doing metal, uh, the metal to wood was not as, they didn't like it as much, but that's where they were. And so actually if they could have the least amount of the metal uh, facing 
or touching the wood, they felt it would go faster. And so this corrugated pattern, sometimes it would have lettering in the bottom. It would talk about what kind of plane it was, but it was taking some of the metal away so you didn't have a complete metal to wood surface. Uh, of course, modern planes are all, you know, for the most part metal. So there are people who make wooden planes still, but for the most of the metal ones, it's all metal and there's not this corrugated business. For me, uh, yeah, I, d I don't mind the corrugated. I've used this one. The other one is not corrugated. And so, hey, who knows? You know, a lot of you probably know this, that um, taking a candle, putting a little bit of candle wax on the, uh, the bed or the, the bottom of the plane helps it to glide a little faster over uh, wood. That's not really for speed. It's more for uh, just having a smoother cut uh, or a, a, a smoother shave and so I use the candle wax especially out here in the garage where there's humidity and uh, these planes well, this one stays out here all the time in the bottom of the Dutch chest the other one lives in the top of the Dutch chest which is put away sometimes when weather is inclement or that sort of thing but for most of the summer it stays out here because the workshop stays out here so since I was not planning to buy or acquire a joiner, which is really long, up to 24 inches. Uh, the Dutch chest was made to hold a uh, joiner up in the front, but I decided instead to put my um, put the four plane there, and I redid the inside so it could hold a four plane and a block plane. And actually, those two were bought together. That's the the other one. Uh, for this one, this was the longest plane I had, and so I was going to use it as my joiner more than I would use like a jack or something like that. Um, a lot of people will take their four plane and they will alter the blade basically down so it can be used as a scrub plane. And so a scrub plane, you take usually the, t the corners of your blade, chamfer them down, uh, wear them down, so it's more of a scoop. And that way you're taking more wood off. And so you get a board, you want to get as much wood off as possible, you're using, it's like a thickness planer, and so for a, a machine, a thickness planer machine, you can use this to get as much of the wood off before you start using some of the other planes. So when I bought this, I wasn't going to do that, but now that I have two, I've considered it. I still haven't done, done it because this is such a nice blade, I really don't want to damage it <laughs> to make it into that kind of a blade. Uh, I could probably go to an antique store and get something like this, use it in this uh, plane and do it that way. But for now, it is a backup for a plane when I don't have the dust chest in the room. So that's what I use it for. Stanley plane, uh, as I said, I bought in Moorhead City Recently, uh, this is a Bailey. Uh, it's got the Bailey in the front. It's got the number six in the back. It's got the Stanley uh, piece here. So. Um, and then the blade is a Stanley blade. So this is a really good package that I was able to acquire. Uh, a lot of times something is missing. And so the frog sort of screwed, bolted, well, I would say that that is screwed down, meaning I can take the screws out and remove it. Um, as opposed to bolted in or some of the other ways that they are. Those of you who know a lot about the Stanley number no. six can probably tell me exactly what age or time period this is from. I, I, I'm not quite so sure. The front pe the front ball and the back handle are probably original to it, but it's kind of hard to tell uh, how accurate that would be. Uh, because this is such, so when I bought this, I bought this and a black plane, a Miller Falls black plane, and they work very well together. And so they're kept together in the Dutch chest. Uh, because this blade is so nice, 
uh, and sharpens so well. And I don't have fancy sharpening equipment, uh, but when I do sharpen it, it sharpens so well. I use it a lot for uh, taking off very thin pieces for finishing, pro uh, for finishing items. Uh, if you have seen the jigs and helps part two, you have seen this being used with the shooting board. And so um, it's used a lot doing this on the shooting board because it can remove very, you know, because of the sharpness of the blade, I'm able to use it for removing, uh, to make things square, to make things square for boxes, for miters, that sort of thing. Uh, somebody spent a lot of their time keeping this in good shape. So when it was sold and I bought it, I got a really nice product for not much money. And so that's how it works at an, an antique store sometimes. I should also note that the lever here is also a Stanley. It's all stamped with the Stanley print, which is good. Giving these two a little spin, a uh, little workout here. We've got a board here, pine board. I believe the grain is going in the correct direction this time. Get this all ready to go. Of course, if you've seen that other video I did, this is to be a little bit of a haphazard situation here. We've got a big board in the face vise. But for the most part, and who knows when I last sharpened this, but I'm still getting some relatively good thin uh, shavings out of here. And this is the Craftsman. This is the one that's um, though I wasn't planning to use it as a scrub plane, that's pretty much what it's used for. I just haven't altered the, um, the plane yet, the blade. I, I don't like altering beautiful blades. Can you, can you blame me? Can you blame me for not doing that? So yeah, that's, that's some good, uh, good stuff there. Of course, I can adjust how much of the blade is coming out based on how much I want to remove. And so... Ooh, that is smooth. That is smooth. Uh, for the Stanley, number six. Now, this blade may need to be, because this was used a lot on making uh, Puzzle Box 4 and the Parthenon, which I'm still building. Wow. <laughs> that is that's some serious, not perfect. You're not going to see perfection here in this shop, but... Um, Still, it's, for my purposes, that is good. And so this is just a very pleasurable plane to use. I, I love using this thing. Yeah, I probably could use a little fine tuning on the sharpening, but this is really a pleasure to use. And so that's why I try to use it only for a shooting board, for some fine plane. Uh, can only be, almost be used as a smoother, although it's really too large for a smoother. Uh, it can really kind of—it's because of how well it's been sharpened and kept by previous owners. Uh, what I get today is a really nice product. If you have not seen Jigs Two, this is a shooting board that I made uh, that clamps right into my tail vise, and I can use with. Uh, you could use it with a shooting plane. I don't have one, so I use my Stanley Number Six. Here's a little piece of wood that we can use as a try. Uh, it's just it's good for getting some small, you can see what's going on there, little pieces of wood are just coming out. And it gives me a good square back surface, very smooth, and that's what I like to use this plane for. So it spends a lot of its time on its side, on the side of the plane. And so that's very helpful for me here in the workshop. And that is the Craftsman and Stanley number six, four planes.